Do you want to master Solidity? Do you want to finally understand it and wrap your brain around it? Well, guess what? We are going to build a to-do list app together. In my opinion, this is one of the best ways to learn how Solidity works, how smart contracts work. Because this app, the scope is small. It's a simple app, yet it's very powerful and effective. And it'll get you to understand how a lot of functionality in Solidity works. How can we use Solidity along with Truffle to make your smart contract? How do we add a task and delete a task and show all of the tasks? How do we add a task so that it actually adds it onto the blockchain? And when you get all the tasks, your front end will go to your back end or your blockchain and get all the tasks from there. This app will also have full on authentication built into it, which essentially means that you'll be able to use MetaMask or any type of uh, Ethereum wallet and log in and log out. And this app will only show you your tasks. So any other users can't see your tasks and cannot delete your tasks. So. I think it's a very powerful app. I hope that you're excited to use it. And with that said, let's um, smash that like button so this video goes out to as many people as possible. And in just a second, we're gonna go ahead and demo this app. Also, just real quick, wanna give a huge shout out to Code with Kavit, who made the video to do app with React and Solidity. So huge shout out to that. A lot of the inspiration comes from that. I referenced the code from there, okay? But I just added in Next.js, a lot of our front end, completely custom front end, and we wanted to add in our own explanation so you could learn Solidity step-by-step. Step. But if you wanna check out also his video, go check it out, he's absolutely awesome. With that said, let's get back into the video. Now let's go ahead and demo the app. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my wallet and you can see MetaMask just popped up over here on the right-hand side. I will select an account, select whichever one you want, and I will connect and boom, look at that. Our app is up and running and it's like, hey, what's up, Kevin or Kazi or whatever your name is, right? We'll go there and now I can add tasks. Walk my dog at 1 p.m., which is actually something I have to do. And then hit this plus sign right here and watch this, we're actually adding it to our blockchain. So now MetaMask pops up to ask for our authentication. If we wanna do this, I will hit confirm and it has been added onto the blockchain and it is a actual task that is created. Let's go ahead and create another task. I'm gonna go ahead and eat my food at 5 p.m. Okay, let's go ahead and hit plus on here and now just watch what happens. Okay, let's hit confirm. There we go. It has been confirmed. The front end is looking pretty nice, but the main point of this app is not the front end. It's that you could actually, using Solidity, add tasks and things to the blockchain, and it will really clarify and make you understand a lot of things of how Solidity works and how smart contracts really work. Now, if I hit delete on here, this icon right there, you'll see it'll actually delete that. So I'll hit delete. And then let's wait a little bit and let's refresh and let's see if it's been removed. Okay, boom, I hit delete. And now it actually asks me to make sure that it's confirmed. And now once I confirm it, okay, you gotta give it some time before it will actually just completely get rid of it because we are removing it. We have to let the block our back end on the blockchain side know that we're actually gonna be getting rid of it. And now it's basically gone. And this is happening on the blockchain side. So I'll show you how we're doing this on the blockchain side so you can understand. And uh, since it's on blockchain, you're not technically completely deleting it, but we're filtering it out on the block end. And so you'll get to learn how to do that. So this is the app. I think it's really cool. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun building this with me. With that said, let's just start building this bad boy up now. All right, now make sure to click the link in the description below. This is completely free. And this is a template that I created for you, Solidity with the to-do list. Uh, it's gonna have Next.js and Tailwind CSS and all the front end code essentially just ready because I would just give it away. I would want you to simply focus on the Web3 and the blockchain part. So this REPL for you will have all of that code already there. And then you can only work on the Solidity part, okay? So make sure to go here and if you wanna use this, make sure to hit fork REPL because that's the only way you'll be able to code in here and use this template. 
Okay, and the link will be below and it'll be join.replit.com slash CP dash solidity dash to do. So you could type that in or just click the link in the description. All right, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and fork this REPL. And once I fork this, it should bring you to a page like this. And all this means now is you can actually code here. And so the benefits of this REPL that I've sent you to is in this one, you will have Next.js already installed. All right, you'll have Tailwind CSS already installed and configured. All the front end code is already completed, so you won't really have to do any of the front end code. Okay, majority of the front end code is complete. Okay, let's not say all because there is still you're going to still need to write front end code that needs to interface with the back end. Okay, so that's done. Truffle has been installed. So Truffle is I'll show you how to install it, but I installed it already for you because it takes a really long time to install. So I'm like, hey, I'd rather just have that process speed up. Okay, this is done. This is done. Most of this is done. And then this is done. Okay, so that's the real benefit of this REPL that you're actually looking at. All right, so let's get started with that said. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you through majority of the code. Okay, what's there so far and what you should find in here. Okay, so you should find a client folder and that should have all of your front end code. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through that a little bit. And then I'm gonna walk you through some other stuff. But first, just make sure in your package manager, all I want you to do is install Truffle. So you can type in Truffle. And normally what would happen is you'd have a plus sign here to install it. You don't right now, like a plus sign like this. You don't right now because already installed. Okay, so that's already done. So let's go here. The next thing I wanna show you is in your client front end, in your package JSON, you're going to need access to some libraries like React icons or Next or some Tailwind stuff. That's already there for you. Okay, so you don't have to install it. You could yarn it, but you don't even need to do that because like the node modules are already there as well. So you should be good to go on that end. So React icons, you already have it. Then auto prefix for post CSS and Tailwind CSS because these are all the things you need for CSS. This, the tailwind files you need for so, so yeah your tailwind is ready to go cool so that was one thing i had to explain to you now let's walk through the actual app so let's first take a look at it so you should be able to cd right now into your app into client and then just do yarn dev and that should start running your app so let's take a look you can also open it in a new tab if you want to just fully see it it takes a second, so just be a little bit patient. And there you go, your app is up and running. Okay, you could zoom out if you want. I'm gonna zoom in because I'm on a big screen, so I want you to see this. And right now, writing on your app will not work because that's the backend part and you haven't added any backend code. So really nothing is gonna happen. Okay, it's just gonna refresh and that's it. Yeah, right now there's no front end. So whatever you do, nothing is really gonna happen but you have the nav bar right here. You have the entire to-do list app. You have this to-do thing, and then you have this plus button right over here. So that's mainly the front end right now. So let's go back. And what I wanna show you is these are all the components that I've already created for you. Okay, so the connect wallet button, nav bar, all of those are there. Okay, so nav bar, task, to-do list, so those are already there for you, okay? Connect wallet button and wrong network message. Now, some of this stuff, you're probably like, okay, how do I see the wrong network message or connect wallet button? Because I don't see them right now. So here's how you can see them. So let's go into our index. This is the main file where everything is happening. These are all the nodes for the app, but I'm gonna just walk you through them together so we won't need them. So I'm gonna get rid of them, okay? And let me just walk you through the entire code base. Okay, so let's put that here and let's just walk through the entire code base now. All right, so we're importing some of the components that we had made, but here's what I want you to actually see. All right, the main part of the logic, so these are functions that are just going to be empty. All right, and these are functions you're going to have to complete. These are uh, the back end functions. So connecting the wallet, 
being able to get all the tasks from the back end, being able to add a task to the back end, and being able to delete a task from the back end. So this is all back end related. Okay, all three of these functions. So when I say back end, in this case, it's the blockchain part. This connect wallet function is going to just simply be connecting wallet to MetaMask to any type of Ethereum ERC20 wallet, whatever. All right. So those are the ones that we're going to work on. And uh, this is the other main part that I have already handed over to you. So this over here, this div, there's not much to really worry about here, but this is really styling it. So if I get rid of all of the styling here, it's just going to look like out of whack, right? So that's just a wrapper. That's all that's doing. So I'm going to bring that back and they'll just contain the app, put it in the middle, add a color in the background, centralize things. So that's what that's doing. Okay. So now you can even pretty much not really worry too much about this piece of code, this piece of code. The main piece of code that I want you to focus on now and worry about is this guy right over here. Okay. And that's really the main logic of the app so far, which is, hey, check if the user is logged in. And if they're not logged in, show them the connect wallet button. Okay. So here I can make a user be, let's just fake a not logged in user. And what that will look like, how we can do that is just remove that Boolean, that exclamation mark. Let's remove that exclamation mark. So it just says, is user not logged in? So now it is true that the user is not logged in. Okay. And if that's the case, then show the connect wallet button. So that's why it's showing that button right there. And now we, the other situation we have is, hey, is this the correct network? Okay, so basically if the user, if we go back to the other situation, okay, which is the user is, this basically says the user is currently logged in. Okay, because there's a double negation here and negation here. So it just means the user is logged in. So if the user is logged in, we bypass this component. We don't do this. We do the else statement. Okay, so this is our else statement. So if the user is logged in, then we want you to ask one more question. Is this the correct network? If we're on the correct network, which in this case is going to be the Rinkeby test network, then show the to-do list. So then show this. But if we're not on the correct network, so I can mimic that as well by just adding exclamation mark here and saying we're on the wrong network. So if we're on the wrong network, then it's going to not render the to-do list, but render the wrong network message component. And this is a pretty simple component. There's not much going on here. It just says, please connect to the Rinkeby testnet and reload the page. So this means you tried to connect to some other network like Rospin or something else. So that's what's happening there, right? If the user is not logged in and this is not the correct network, then show the wrong network message. Okay, so those are the three components and you can toggle them really easily by just removing, if I remove both of these, right? Then that means the user is not logged in and it'll show us the connect wallet button. If the user is logged in, then it'll show us, and it's the correct network, then it'll show us to-do list and the to-do list pops up. So just play around with that so you can just understand the logic that's happening here, okay? Because that's the really kind of important part. And then, of course, we're going to make this more dynamic because right now this is just hard-coded here, but we're going to actually get access to the user using their Ethereum wallet. So you're going to need to complete the connect wallet function for that, okay? And then you'll be able to actually keep track of the logged in user. And then where it says, is this the correct network? Same thing. It's you're just going to pull that information from connect wallet and your connect wallet will be able to tell you if this is on rink be the user logged in or the user logged in somewhere else. Okay. So the connect wallet function will take care of both of these states that you need to be really tracking. Okay. These are also going to be states, right? Or so. We're going to be using a little bit of React for that. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tackle really the most difficult part first, which is we're going to be going ahead and making our smart contract first, because really majority of this code, like especially all these parts right here, they're really going to depend on what your back end is like, aka what your smart contract is like, because here you just like imagine writing code without knowing what your API is going to look like. Everything you're going to write is going to be wrong. So 
We're going to make our back end first and the API or whatever first. And then from the front end, we'll simply just interface with it. Okay. So I hope that gives you a lot more clarity of what we're doing. And now we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So let's go and create a back end now. So this is our front end. Okay. This is our client front end. We're going to create a new folder. Okay. At the global level, I'm going to hit folder and make sure it's not inside of client, make sure it's outside of client. And this folder, we're going to just call it our back end or the blockchain part. Okay. And we're going to go ahead into our command line and we're just going to CD into that. So hit control C to end hit CD dot dot. So you can actually get out of it. And now we're going to go CD backend. Okay. And now if you're in your backend, now we're going to go ahead and say truffle init. Okay. So just type in truffle init. All right. So once you do truffle init, if you look in your backend, you already, you have files now. So you have truffle config, you have a test file, a migrations contracts. Another reason why I'm doing this on Replit is you don't have to worry about this installation nightmare that often happens while you're coding along on a Mac or a Linux or a Windows and you can't get a Solidity thing to install or a Truffle thing to install or Next install. So everything is already installed and there for you, okay? So just make sure that you've forked the correct template. And again, it's in the description if you missed out on that earlier. All right, so I've done Truffle in it. Now my like template project is ready to go. Now we're gonna basically go ahead and create a smart contract. So this line over here that says Truffle create contract, your contract name. We're going to go ahead and use that command to create our new contract. Okay. And that's going to create a scaffold of a contract. So just like bare bones contracts. I'm going to go ahead and say truffle create contract. And then we're going to go your and sorry, not your, but we're going to say task contract. Okay. Cause we're going to make a contract for our tasks. So essentially we're getting a back end for our tasks. All right, let's do that. Okay, so this contract will allow you to create a task and add a task and show tasks and filter tasks. It's going to be all task related. Now, if I look inside of my contracts, I will see task contract dot SOL. Okay, so let's go inside of here. And now it's going to be the really meaty fun part because we're actually just going to be writing a lot of our logic here for our code. Okay. So this is going to be all of our backend logic. So it's going to be actually a really important part. Great. Let's walk through everything step by step, because especially if you're new to solidity, I just want to make sure that you understand every possible thing. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in. So everything is super nice and clear. All right. First thing right here, this is oftentimes you'll see it in solidity, just add in some kind of license. Okay. So just, you can copy paste this exact one, right? Should be there already. Now, the Solidity version that we want is a specific version in this case, and I want 0.8.15, okay? This is a version that I want. Every single line of Solidity that you end, you have to end it with a semicolon. If you don't, you will get an error or your app will break, okay? So that's important. And here, whenever you're actually writing a Solidity file, you pretty much always have to do contract, task contract. So imagine like this is function, or a component task contract, but in Solidity you say contract. And then this constructor, we don't need it. So we can actually get rid of that constructor, okay? In here, we're gonna have two events. So I'm gonna have an add task event okay? and is going to take in a, so let me write it like regular JavaScript first. So it's gonna take in a recipient and it's gonna take in a task ID, okay? So this is how, you might write something in JavaScript where you're like, okay, I'm creating a function or whatever. And this function takes called, it's called at task. And it takes in two parameters, recipient and task ID, except in Solidity, you have to say those, their types. So recipient will be a type address. Okay. So those wallet addresses, like whatever the wallet address is, like those are specific types in Solidity and you refer to them as address. And then task ID is going to be an, an unsigned integer. Okay, so we will say uint, uint. And then we're also gonna need an event for delete task. Okay, and delete task is gonna ask for a task ID and it's gonna ask for hey, if it's deleted or not, the task is deleted or not. Okay, and task ID is gonna be a uint. 
Okay. And then this is going to be, can you guess, if something is a true or false, what data type is that? If you guess bool, good job. Okay, so that's going to be a Boolean. All right. Now, we're going to create a data type that's going to represent the following structure. So let's go into our index file. And I just want to kind of show this to you in index. Our tasks will have the following structure. So this is an array of tasks, but this is an object or in in solidity you might call this a map or a struct this is this right over here okay is an object here right javascript this is what one task will look like it'll have an id text and whether it's deleted or not okay so that's what one task looks like so if i go ahead and i go back to my task contract you could do command p for what i did and then just type in task contract okay so we're gonna now create a structure that mimics what we saw. So I'm going to go ahead and do struct and task. And this structure is just going to say, hey, it's going to take the, these are the keys. Okay, so we're going to have an ID. We're going to have task text. And we're going to have is deleted. Okay. And the last thing you want to tell the struct is what are the data types of each of these? So for ID, my data type is a uint. For task text is going to be type string, and for de is deleted is going to be a boolean. Okay, so in Solidity, if you want to create, let's say something with an object, right? If you want to create a task, like if I go back to this task right here, if I want to create a task like this, so let's copy this and let's come back into our task contract and let's paste it. If I want to create a task like that. I can use a struct to create that exact task. So I can go task and then let's say I pass it a one. I pass it clean and let's say I pass it false. Sorry, zero. It's going to create that exact task. So this is going to return and turn into an object. Okay. So it's almost like you're calling a function or whatever. Okay. It's a constructor. It's a task and then it'll spit back out that. Okay, so that's how, that's why you need structs. And when you use a struct, you will get back what we call an object in JavaScript. Okay, this is just to give you a little reference. Okay, so I'll leave that reference up here. And this is a task. Okay, this is what a task will look like. Okay, great. So we have our task struct. And now what we want to do is we want to have an array that is filled with tasks. So when you're creating that, you're going to basically say, hey, I want to create an array. So let's just do it this way, okay? So I want to create an array called tasks. In JavaScript, you would just do this. But here, this is not JavaScript, right? So I want an array called tasks. Now, what I want it to be is I want it to be of, I want it to be an array, okay? And uh, it's going to have, it's going to be an array, and it's going to be filled with these objects, okay? So if you try to put integers into this array tasks, so for example, let's just say you try to do tasks.push. So let's say you have this variable tasks available to you now, okay? And let's say tasks is an array. Now, if you try to do tasks.push and put a one, it's gonna go, it's gonna give you an error because it's gonna say, hey, that's not the type that you told me. The type that you told me is gonna, this is the type. This is what it should look like. So, but now if you actually put, let's say something that looks like this in here, if you try to push this, it's gonna accept it. It's gonna go, yes, it's this exact thing. Okay, this is an integer. This is a string for task as a Boolean. Yes, I will accept it and it will add it. Okay, so you're creating these strict types. So it's like TypeScript if you've ever used it. And then we're just going to say this is private, meaning that anybody outside of this function should not have access to it. Okay. And then we're going to create a mapping, which is going to be helpful for task to owner. So we'll say mapping. And I'll say uint 256 address task to owner. So I know this is probably like, what the heck is this? All this part means, so this part right over here is just a variable, okay? We're just saying, hey, create initialize a variable called tasks to owner, and the type that it's going to have is this. And all this means that anytime you create 
task to owner, you're going to have an object that looks like the following. The key, this represents, this part right here represents a key right over here represents an address. Okay. Obviously, and an address might look like those wallet addresses might look like that. Okay. So here, let's just say that this is the wallet address of Kazi, which is me. Okay. And then we go, boom. All right. Task to owner. And then boom, we will have another task like this. Oh, not in the same thing, but let's just say we have another task and this is task one and this is David. Okay. So how this will work is imagine this, you have two tables. Okay. And on the left-hand side, we have a table called tasks. And then on the right-hand side, we have a table called owners. Okay. And so say walk the dog might be a task. And then here on the right-hand side for owners, you have all the owners like Kazi, whatever. But the way that we're storing it is in the following way. So we're giving this task an ID of zero. So we're going to say the task ID here is zero, walk the dog. And inside of owners, we're going to say the ID of zero belongs to, let's say, Kazi. And almost like in SQL, this will allow us to do an inner join and match all these tasks. So this way, the app will have proper authentication and it'll show me only my tasks, not somebody else's. For example, if for one, we had clean dishes, but that was like David created that, then this would basically say, hey, this was created by David. Okay. So then when Kazi logs in, Kazi will only see walk the dog. And when David walks in, he will only see clean the dishes. Okay. So the ID inside of the task and this ID, this key over here, these are the two pieces of the puzzle that allow us to do an inner join and find the who the tasks belongs to. So this is a structure. This is what mapping blah, 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 whatever is. Okay, this is what it'll look like. So I'll get rid of that for now. Okay, cool. Now, next up, we're going to create a function and this function, we'll call it add task. All right, let's keep on rocking and rolling here. So our add task function that we're going to make is going to take in a task text and is going to take in is deleted. Okay. So here's what I want you to imagine right now. This function that we're actually creating here right now, we can actually call this function from our front end. Okay. So imagine that we're going to be calling this from our front end at some point. And how we're going to be calling this from our front end at some point is going to look like this. From our front end, we're going to do task contract dot add task function. And then from our react slash next.js code, we're going to pass in a text like walk the dog. And then we're going to pass in is deleted is false or true. So we're going to, let's say, pass in like this is not currently deleted. This is so deleted is deleted as false. So this is add task function or method or whatever you want to call it that we are creating that we could interact with eventually from our front end, not right this second. Okay. So that's what we're writing. Just keep that in mind. All right. Now, since this is solidity, we have to tell it what types these are. So task text, this is a string. And when you do string, you sometimes have to write memory there. So we'll just write that. And then this one is a bool. Okay. So that's what that is. All right. So we're done with that part. Now, what we want to do is we want to basically say that this function is external. So we have access to it from outside of this too. And external basically means that this function isn't really doing, isn't really returning anything in this case. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and say, we're going to create task ID and what will task ID be? So think about it like this. Okay. Say you have an array of tasks. So you have an array of tasks and that array looks like this like this filled with these tasks. Okay. So we got task one, we got task two, task three. What we want to do is we want to generate task IDs here, right? And we want to generate preferably a unique task ID most of the times. And 
we also want to just make it simple. Like the first one should be zero, the next one should be one, the next one should be two, so on and so forth. This is easy. What we could do is say that this array is called tasks. What we could do is we could just say when we're creating this task, we could just for the ID, we could just say, hey, grab the tasks and grab its dot length. So if I get this task's length, well, I get zero. Well, when I get this task's length the second time, I get one. When I get the task's length the third time, what do I get? Hopefully you guessed it, okay? You get a two, right? Simple. We're just going to say it's going to be tasks.length. Okay, and we're pulling the tasks from there. Make sure to put a semicolon so it doesn't error out. Next up, what we're going to do is whatever task the user passed in, we need to append that to our tasks array array that's made up of these task objects okay so i'm going to say tasks dot push and now we're going to create that object okay, so i'm going to say task the constructor and then give it the task id that we just created right there we're going to give it the task text and then the is deleted task text and is deleted so this will push it on and basically what this is doing is this right here will basically get simplified to that right there. Okay, one task is going to create one object, one map. All right, next up, we need to set up that database of task to owner. So create that relationship. So I'm going to say task to owner. Okay, and I'm going to give it a task ID for task to owner. So remember this variable that we made task to owner. And so it's going to take a uint, right? And the uint in this case will be zero for this task. For the next task is going to be one. For the next task is going to be two. And this over here needs to be whoever the user is. Okay, so user is going to go right there. Okay, the logged in user. In this case, we're just going to say message on sender. This is a special thing in Solidity MSG message. And then if you do dot sender, it'll get the wallet address of whoever was currently logged in. Let's put a semicolon here. Let's put a semicolon here. Okay, and then we can even emit this. And we can say emit, add task. And I can say message sender and then give it a task ID. Remember, we created this event at task. And now we can emit it, but we just need to give it an address for the recipient. So this is the recipient. And then this is the task ID right giving it that task id perfect so in terms of the add task function our add task function at this point is complete i'm going to remove these tasks at the bottom or i can leave it and just comment it out all right the next function that we need to add is our get tasks function okay or get my tasks function so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to say function we're going to say get my tasks and we're gonna say external view returns. And we can even say what this will return. And this will return a task like object. Okay. And now let's open this function up and start writing. Okay. So we're gonna create a variable called temporary. Okay. And so temporary is just gonna be an array. And what we wanna do is we want to keep pushing new tasks to it that are of that owner. Okay. So temporary will filter for the owner and for non-deleted tasks. Okay, so get my tasks. We wanna do is we wanna get tasks that, let's say that have, that are mine and not yet deleted, okay? So temporary, okay, and it's gonna give a new task-like object. We'll instantiate it like this, okay? And this array that we want, so temporary is gonna be an array. And this array that we want, so in Solidity, you could give a size of the array. So I, if I said array of, let's just say two or whatever, or two right here, then what will happen is I will get an array of size two and no bigger. Like it can't go bigger than size two. It has a fixed amount of slots. And so what I'm going to just say here is tasks.length. Why? Because I want this array to be obviously no longer than there are tasks. That wouldn't make sense. And this temporary here, it's going to be this. Okay, it's going to be an array of these 
th these tasks. Okay, and we're just going to say memory. Perfect. Okay, and let's put a semicolon there. Let's put a semicolon here. If you miss any semicolons, it will break. So just keep making sure to put semicolons everywhere. All right, now we're going to set up a counter that I'm going to set to zero. And then we're going to write loop through this. And so I'm going to say for u int i equals zero while i tasks dot length. Okay. I plus. Why are we doing this? We're going to loop through all of our tasks and then we're just going to keep adding them to temporary. And we're going to do a check here. So I'm going to say if task to owner of that specific task is equal to the message of sender, meaning if this is my task. So let's say that there is a task to owner that has a key of zero, right? And so if we look at that and we go and get the key of zero and we go, okay, the task is whatever. If this is going to turn it into its value is going to be an address. And if that address of that task matches the address of who's logged in, then that means this is, these are my tasks. Okay. And we're going to add in one more check and we're going to say, Hey, check if tasks is deleted is false. So making sure giving me tasks that are not yet deleted. Let me zoom out just a little bit. So give me tasks that are not deleted. Okay. So if this is the case, what I want you to do is set that task in that specific position. This is just a way of writing a push. Okay. This is just another way of writing a push. I want you to get used to it because in solidity, this is like pretty common. People do it like this, where you're just really basically saying in the zeroth position, place this in the first position of that temporary array place this. So if you imagine temporary is an array of size two, so let's just say it's empty, empty right now. What this is saying is, Hey, go to position zero. So this is position zero and then set that to that specific task. So task text, hello is deleted, false, whatever. So add that task there. And then go again, loop again. And then if you find my task again, that's also not deleted at that here. Okay. So that's what temporary is. And then we just increment the counter by one. So we will do counter plus. Okay. So let's get out of this. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to spit it out in something called result and result is going to be the length of the counter not the length of the entire array. So result is just going to be, so if, if my tasks were two and the total tasks were maybe 10, then this result is only going to be of size two. And we'll loop through this. So I will say I is equal to zero. I is less than counter I plus. And then I'm just going to say here for result of I, just set it to be of whatever is in temporary of I. Okay. And then at the end, we're simply just going to go ahead and return result. Okay, so that's my function. Here's my loop. Then I do my loop again, and then I return my result. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Just make sure to put semicolons in all the right places. Don't miss any semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. Okay, great. So we're good with get my tasks. Okay, the next one that we're going to work on is add task. Where does the whole tract end? So let's see, contract ends right there. Okay, cool. Let's go here. And we're going to go ahead and say function. And it's going to be a new function we're going to make. And this function is only going to be for deleting tasks because we already have a way to add the task. We already have a way to get our tasks. Now all we need to do is be able to delete tasks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say task ID is delete task wants a task ID. It also wants is deleted or not. Okay. So we can just say bool and just make it external. Great. Now I'm going to say if the task to owner, so it's basically if it's, if I am authenticated to be viewing this or doing stuff with it. So if this is my task that was given, then what I want you to do is get that task ID and set it's is deleted to be is deleted, whatever was passed in, which you honestly don't even have to be past this. It should just be set to false, but like you could do it like this as well. That's fine. 
uh, you can set it to true, I'm sorry, true. So it just, okay, it's deleted as true. And then we just emit the event. Okay, this is not completely necessary, but you could do this. Now, basically, just so you can visualize what's happening is from the front end, how we're going to call any of these functions. From the front end, we wanna be able to just do task contract that delete task and then we give it a task so we give it like an id so we give it zero i'm just mapping this to that and then we give it this so we just go true so that just means hey i am confirming that i want to delete this specific task and i'm saying zero comma true and then it will confirm and then delete that task okay but realistically all we're doing is we're not really deleting tasks all we're doing is setting its deleted value to true and then in our get my tasks we're just filtering for it we're just really there's just a filter okay and that filter all it does is it just doesn't show you anything that has the deleted value set to true okay so the filter is filtering is happening here specifically right? okay make sure it's not deleted is what that line is saying and then here we're just marking. So think of it like we're just labeling it as deleted and then we're just filtering it because on the blockchain, you can't really delete anything. All right, cool. And then now we can get rid of this. So with that said, our smart contract part that we wanted to write, our smart contract is done. All right, so if you've gone here, really good job, awesome job. And now we're gonna go ahead and move forward. Okay, now we're almost ready to interact with it from the front end we're very close but not completely there yet so what we have to do is get it ready to be interacted with from the front end so we'll need really two things we'll need a contract address a deployed contract address so we need to deploy this okay so that means almost imagine like you're deploying it to the web and then you can access it from your front end okay or you're deploying it and then the second thing we need is access to a which if I want to make your life really simple, is literally just an ape that will allow you to use all these methods, okay? So we need this and we need ABI, okay? ABI, luckily for us, gets created pretty easily in the back end, okay? I'll show you where that gets created once we go ahead and create it. For now, the most important thing is we need to get a deployed contract address, all right, now here are the steps that we're going to take. So in our back end, let's go ahead to our migrations. And in here, we're just going to rename this to task contract everywhere. So task contract, that should be task contract, and that should be task contract. Once we're done with that, we're just going to download this entire project. So everything from REPL. Okay, we're going to download it as zip on our local computer because for this part, we need two terminals. And in REPL, Replit currently, you can't have two terminals open at once. And so I'm just going to go ahead and download it and then we can use it locally. If you have ever, if you ever have problems with downloading, just simply refresh your REPL and then just go ahead and try downloading again, and then it should be fine. All right. So now we have this zip file. Let's go ahead and open this up. The zip file once it's opened up in your command line, I want you to go ahead and CD into it. So let's go to our downloads and we're gonna find where that is. So Solidity template two or whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do template. Let's see if it's CD Solidity template two, perfect. So now I'm inside of this, okay, folder. And now once you're here, first things we wanna do is this. We want to go ahead and install Truffle if you don't have it on your local computer. Just do yarn global add Truffle, okay? Or npx global or npm global add install Truffle, whatever, okay? So you're gonna need that. Okay? You need to add it globally. You can't, if you do it locally, it still won't work. So make sure you install it globally and then you, it'll work. Okay, so now we installed Truffle globally. Now what you wanna do is CD into the backend folder and you wanna do truffle dashboard. And this is super cool. It'll actually open up a truffle dashboard and you wanna deploy it with your own specific wallet address. So it allows you to do that. So you can actually click MetaMask here. All right, 
And then it says, hey, confirm that you're on Rinkeby Network. And yeah, I believe that we are. So let's connect it. Okay, so now it says there's a green sign here that says connected. Zoom in there. Perfect. Okay, so now that it's connected, I can get out and I can just hit confirm. Okay, great. So now this is good. Now let's open up our command line. We'll leave this dashboard running and just open up a new tab. Okay, so open up a new tab. So this one is running or open up a new terminal. Whatever you want to do, is whatever is easier for you. Okay, now we CD into that same place. Solidity. Okay, CD into backend. And what we want to do now is go ahead and do truffle migrate dash network dashboard. Okay, so this will compile all our contracts. So there's an error. You forgot to put semicolon. So I'm going to go ahead inside of our contracts and I'll also make sure to put a semicolon here and here. Okay. But more importantly, we need to actually fix that on our local file. So let's go ahead into our task contract dot SOL and let's see if I can open it with code runner because it's just quick. You could do it with VS code, whichever one, it doesn't really matter. Okay. And I'll go right there, wherever I'm doing the emits okay, and put a put a semicolon here and a semicolon here and just save it. Okay, I'm going to get out. Okay, let's open up our terminal again. And let's try it one more time. Now it's deploying it. Look at that already popping up over here. That is pretty freaking cool, huh? Waiting for transaction signature. Please check your wallet for a transaction approval message. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and now hit process. So let's hit process. Boom, our wallet just opened up. Go ahead and hit confirm. Okay, and now it's just deploying it to the internet. Okay, or the blockchain rather. And boom, there you go. It's been deployed. Now, the very important thing that we need here is the contract address. So double click, copy that because that's what you're going to need. Okay, everything else you don't really need right now. Let's go back to our replit and let's open up our shell. Feels like a ritual. Feels like a crazy ritual. CD into backend. Okay. All right. Now that I'm inside of REPL and I'm in backend, I'm just going to go ahead and do truffle compile. So now once I compile, it's going to make my ABI for me. So let's go ahead and see that build contracts, boom, we have our task contract right here. And task contract.json, that's our ABI, aka our API and what we're going to need to what allows us to be able to talk to this from our front end. Okay, so with that said, that is successfully compiled, we're done with that. Now let's go ahead inside of our client folder. So let's go here. And we're going to go ahead and create a new file. And this file, we're going to call it config.js. So just pretend like I didn't have this file. Okay. So we're going to create a new one. Didn't mean to have that file. Okay. We shouldn't have that file. Okay. So let's just pretend you never saw that. All right. And go into clients and you're going to make it because you're not going to come with a config file. Okay. So let's go ahead. And by the time you're seeing this tutorial, that sh problem should already be fixed and you shouldn't even have a config file. So it's great. All right. Now in the config file, what I need to do is I need access to that specific contract address that I had copied earlier. If you don't have it copied earlier, just go ahead, double click here, copy it now. Okay. And there you go. That's the address. So you just do export const con task contract address equals that. Okay. And uh, this is going to be pretty important. So make sure you leave that in your config file. Okay. Because this is the contract address we're going to need to be able to speak to it from the front end. So almost imagine like this is your access token. Okay. You can need access to your access token. Now let's go ahead into our index.js. And now we're ready to actually start writing up all of our code. So we're going to go ahead and import task ABI. And we can just say from, and we want to get to our task ABI is coming from our back end task contract.json right here. So we just need to import this file task contract.json. So we got to go into back end. And then inside of backend, where do we need to go into? We need to go into build 
And then inside of that, when you do into contracts and then go task contract.json. Okay, if you copy link to that should, that's actually a different link. That's not the path. So ignore, I said that. Cool. All right, there you have it. So now we're importing that address. Okay, that's one thing that we need access to. The other thing we're going to need access to is a contract address. So let's go ahead and do import task contract address from, and this is much closer to us. It's just in our config.js. Okay. You can hit that over there to just prettify your code. All right, now that we have our task ABI and we have our task contract address, now we're really ready to actually finish writing all of this code because those are really some of the main things that we needed access to. All right, first thing we're gonna do is implement our connect wallet function, okay? Because that's gonna be kind of the sim one of the simplest, simpler ones and one of the most important and the first thing that happens. So for that, we're going to need ethers, okay? And ethers is something that you'll have to install if you don't have it already. So we could just go and check if we have it. All right, let's get to work on connecting our wallet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it into a try catch block. We'll add the catch as well. Okay, and the catch is gonna be just simple. It's gonna be, hey, if there's an error, just say error. Okay, cool. And then in the try, we're gonna basically write all of our logic. So I'm gonna say, hey, grab Ethereum from window. So whenever MetaMask actually like latches on, so to speak, on your app. So whenever you like log in with MetaMask or whatever, the window, like the Chrome window or the Safari window or whatever, you actually have access to a variable called Ethereum. Okay, so you could actually destructure that. It becomes a property of window. You could destructure that out of window, okay? So we're gonna grab access to Ethereum. And then we're gonna say, if Ethereum does not exist, so it's like value is null or whatever, then we're just gonna say MetaMask not detected. Okay. And then we're just gonna end the whole thing. Just, just hit return. It's kind of like a guard clause. Okay, just make sure that's there. Okay. All right, we're gonna check the chain ID and we're gonna get it from Ethereum, a request. And the method that we're looking for here is going to be ETH chain ID. Okay. That'll get us the whatever chain somebody logged on with that specific chain ID. Okay. And then we can just say, hey, this person connected to chain. And then we can just write a chain ID. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and set a Rinkeby chain ID and Rinkeby chain ID is 0 4 Okay, that will make sure that the user is on Rinkeby indeed. Rinkeby is a test network and it's also what my what I named my cat after. And then we're basically gonna say, hey, whatever the chain ID that the user selected, if that's not the same as the Rinkeby chain ID, then in that case, you're not you're not connected to the Rinkeby test net, right? And then we wanna now start getting some state variables into play. So let's go ahead and create a couple of state variables. We'll just start off with const correct network. We'll have set correct network, okay? And this, we could set it as false. So the start, the network that's selected is fault, like not the right one. But then when it's set up correctly, we're just gonna go ahead and call this and say, true okay, so it's going to be the correct one and then we're just going to end this function because we got the wallet and we got the chain so there's nothing to do anymore just end everything if that's not the case then basically we're gonna hold on let's see oh i'm sorry this should be false because you're not connected to ring to be test net. and then this one should be true Okay, that means yes, we are connected correctly. So there we go, true. Okay, once that's done, let's get our accounts now. Okay, so the account is this. If I open up my MetaMask, I guess I can open up my MetaMask here as well. Account three, right? So that's an account out of many other accounts. So you can see I have multiple other accounts, right? One, two, three, whatever. 
So we're going to say accounts and we're going to await and do an Ethereum dot request. Okay. And we'll say method on this one is going to be, let me hide this so you can see clearly method is going to be ETH request accounts. All right. Once you do that, it'll re request the accounts and it'll open up that modal where it like hovers over. And by, by modal, I mean this thing, right? When Met MetaMask actually pops open. So that's what that will do. And then what we want to do is we want to say found account and show the zeroth account or whatever the account that the user pretty much selected. Okay. And once the account is set, then we need to actually keep track of the account as well. So let's go ahead and add a few more state variables. So here I'm going to have is user logged in or not? Because we need to know that. So we're going to say set is user logged in. Initial state is going to be false, obviously. Let's also go ahead and import use state because we're going to need access to that. So let's just do use state, hit enter, and it imported it. Okay. All right. So it's user logged in. Perfect. And then the next one where I'm going to need access to is current account. Okay. So we can actually say current account set current account and make the current account empty. And so we can say the user is logged in at this point. So I can say this is true. And at this point, current account, we have access to that as well. So we can actually say set current account and we can actually give it accounts of zero. Okay, so both of those things are now done. And at this point, we're done with the connect wallet function. Okay, now all we wanna do is we want to connect the connect wallet function to our component connect wallet button. So let's pass this function down because we're going to need access to it in this component. So I'm going to say connect wallet, give it connect wallet or function. Okay, so we're giving it this function. Now let's go to connect wallet button and we can destructure that connect wallet. And then we can add an on click method so you see, I even have these nice little notes here for you. So you could just go on click and just say connect wallet. So basically just run that function when I click it. Now let's see if we've done it correctly. Cause if we've done it correctly, it should be working perfectly. Okay. So let's go ahead and say the user is currently not logged in. So let's remove that and let's see what happens. So I'll hit refresh on here. Okay, let's go ahead and open our REPL. Make sure you do yarn CD into client and then do yarn dev. That should pop it open. Okay, we should have a button coming up here anytime now. All right, we have this button right there. Let's go ahead and click that and boom, look at that. That popped open. That is very nice. Let's make sure that we're looking at our console log as well. Okay, connected to Chian. I misspelled it, but whatever. You get the point, chain. Let's hit, so this console log worked. Okay, let's hit next. Let's hit connect. And boom, found account. Serenkaby, right? That is awesome. Let's go back. Let's disconnect our account. So we can go ahead, click that fox. Go ahead and hit disconnect account. You could change your chain as well. So you could change from Rinkaby test network. So make sure you have Rinkaby test network, right? So if you don't have Rinkaby test network, you're going to go ahead and click, you're going to click here. You're going to click show and hide test networks, and then you're going to turn on test networks. And once you do that, these test networks should show up. Otherwise you can go inside of your settings, go in advanced, and you could scroll down and you could see where it says show test networks and you could turn it on that way as well. Okay. Now let's say you do Rospin or whatever, you connect wallet and it says, Hey, you're not connected to the ring to be test, right? So that error comes up right away and catches it. So it seems like we are ensuring that the user is indeed connecting with ring to be test network. And then it pops it up and then it allows you to connect. We can hit connect and boom, there we go. And then it pulls the account that you connected with specifically. So far, it's working beautifully. All right, next up, since we're done with our connect wallet function and it works perfectly, Next up, we need to work on get all tasks. So we should be able to get all of our tasks or rather let's actually first add the ability to add a task. Okay. 
So let's look at this code right here, note right here. It says add tasks from front end onto blockchain. So we all we need to do is we need to just complete this function now. Okay, add task. How is that task going to work? First of all, we're going to go ahead and prevent default because it's going to be a form we're going to fire off on and this will avoid a refresh. Okay, so this is avoid refresh. That's all. Okay. All right. And then and then what we want to do is we want to do we want to create a task. Okay, and this task is going to be the text is going to be whatever the user inputs. So this is going to be a state variable that we're going to keep track of. And this will be false because whenever you create a task initially, the it is deleted will be false. So let's go back up. Let's keep track of input as well. So we're going to say input set input and use state, use state, and it's going to be empty. Okay. All right. So there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try, we're going to have a try catch block here. Okay, and the catch is just going to be simple. The catch is just going to catch the error. And then it's going to just console log the error. Okay. All right. So now for our ta for our try block, rather, we need to pull some of this code is going to be repetitive. Some of it you've already written. We're going to get access to Ethereum. And then what we're going to say, if Ethereum, so if it exists and your log Ethereum is there, then what I want to do is I want to grab the provider. So we're going to do ethers dot providers dot web three provider and give it Ethereum. Okay. So in other words, we're going to give it like, it's really MetaMask, even though it says Ethereum here, this is like actually MetaMask. Okay. So that's really what's happening here. So this is really MetaMask and we're passing it the MetaMask provider. Okay. Hopefully that clarifies it for you. And then what we're going to say, is going to say, hey, grab the signer, aka the person who just signed it. And then we're going to call the our task contract. Okay, now we're ready. And we're going to do new ethers contract. And so we need to create this contract. And we're going to get our specific contract. So for our specific contract, it's going to need access to our contract address is going to need access to our ABI. Okay. And then we're also going to need access to our signer. So now this will allow us to get access to task contract and all of its methods like add task, uh, delete task, get my tasks, everything that we created in our smart contracts. If I go to our SOL file or task contract file, this will have access to all of these now. Okay, so let's go back to our index. All right, now that we have access to all of this, since this is the add task function, which method do you think we'll need to call after we get access to all of this? It's simple. After this, we need to actually call our task contract dot add task. And we need to grab our task text, give it that, and we need to give it is deleted. Okay, so here, for example, is our task. This will be the input that the user gives, and this by default will be false. Okay, great task. And uh, we can then do, you know, since this is going to be a promise, we can then just get the response. You don't really need to do much with the response. And now we'll just set task, set tasks rather. And so make sure we, we want to create a a state variable that keeps track of these tasks as well. So we're going to say tasks set tasks. Okay. And I'm going to say use state. And in the start, it's just going to be an empty array. And so we're going to say set tasks. And now we're really just going to say whatever tasks was previously, plus that new task we just added. So this is really just appending to our task array. Okay. That's really what it's doing. And then we can say console log completed task or added task. Okay, perfect. And then what we want to do is we want to add a, oops, we want to add a dot catch and we want to say error and then just console log the error. Okay, perfect. So we have this if, and then to this if we want to write an else and we just want to say console log 
Ethereum object does not exist. Okay, so just in case we like don't get that Ethereum object. Cool. So now we can actually add a task. And all we need to do is we need to connect it to our front end. All right, so what does that mean? What that means is let's go ahead and let's put it in a state of that the user is logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and hard code that. Oh, sorry, actually, we don't even need that anymore. We could actually put the actual dynamic state and we can just say is user logged in. And if the user is not logged in, then it'll show at this button. And then if the user is logged in, then it'll take us to the next thing. OK, so let's go ahead, hit connect wallet. Let's go ahead and without this, let's refresh. OK, great. And let's see, are we actually connected or are we not connected? OK, cool. We are connected. Let's change this user logged in, save it. Let's go back. Boom. Now let's see what happens once we connect. So I'll go ahead, hit connect wallet. Let's choose connect and boom, it brings me in. OK, so this is the final version and we can leave it like this. OK, so this is already working dynamically. If I disconnect, it should take me back to the home page. So let's go here. Let's try disconnecting. OK, let's refresh. Boom, it brought me back to the home page. Now let's try it one more time. Try connecting and it brought me back to the to do list app page. OK, so our is user logged in like that one is working correctly. Now for this add task. This function needs to fire off when we add a task. But when I do this and I hit plus, but the thing is that this plus sign doesn't have a on click functionality. So we need to keep track of whatever the user is typing in here. Plus we need to actually, when the user clicks this, we need to add an on click functionality and we need our add task function to actually fire off when the user actually clicks that. And right before we do that, let's just go ahead and make this dynamic as well. So I'm going to say correct network question mark. That's it. OK, so this part is now fully dynamic and it's working. OK, so now going back to our add task, right? Our to do list. Let's go into our to do list component. Our to do list component has a form and then it has this plus button. So we have these little notes here, right? That says, hey, take the input from here because this is the actual input and the form part. And then it says, hey, add an on click right here to that circle. Okay, So that's that circle right there. So we're going to add both of them. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to update the input from the user. OK, so we're going to go back to our index and we need to actually pass the set input hook set input. That way we can actually update the input based on whatever the user finds, right? The set input. So that's one thing. We also need to give it the add task function. So let's go ahead and go add task. Okay. So now we've given it both. Let's go back into to do list and let's destructure set input and let's destructure add task. Now let's go down. And one more actually thing we need to give it to is input because to do list is going to need access to whatever the input is at any given time. So let's go ahead and send it input as well. OK, let's go back to our to do list. All right. Now, right here, I'm going to say value is input and then we need to on change. So we're going to say on change okay, set input to be the target value. OK, so whatever we're typing in. So this is like a pretty common react thing. If you're fuzzy on this, like you could watch my other react videos and next videos. I go more into detail on this type of stuff and uh, boom. So that should take care of whatever I'm typing in. OK, and then the plus button, we need to add the add task function to it. So we need to go on click add task. OK, so that's about it. Okay, that's about it. So let's go ahead and let's go write the word eat a cookie. Let's hit the plus button and let's see if anything happens. Boom, look at that. It popped open and it's asking for a confirmation and it's going to charge me something. I'm going to hit confirm. And you can see in the console log, it says added a task. That is so cool. 
So we were able to actually add a task. Eat a cookie, eat a brownie. Okay, that's the second task. Let's click plus sign and it's working. Let's go here and let's hit confirm. Boom, you can see that it says added task was ran twice. So we eat a cookie, eat a brownie, eating lots of food here. Now you might be wondering, hey, how come all tasks are not showing up? That's because we didn't actually finish writing that method. So once we finish writing that method, it will actually work, okay? And now if you're wondering, hey, why does it log us back out? We need to actually just write a use effect hook. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say use effect. Let's import it. Okay, and what we need to say in our use effect hook is simple. We just need to run our connect wallet right when our app runs. So now if I refresh, logged in automatically. Okay, very nice. All right, great. So far, app is looking very good. It's doing what we needed to do. But now what we need to do is we need to be able to retrieve all of those tasks and then show them onto the screen. All right, now let's go ahead and get all of our tasks. Okay, so this is like really one of the key methods that we're gonna create because it's going to get obviously all of our tasks. So some of the code is gonna be repetitive. And for that, we can just copy this. So let's actually first write our try block in our get tasks. So let's go here, I'm gonna say try and then catch and whatever error we get, we're just gonna console log that error, okay? And now in this try catch block, some of the code is gonna be simple for getting up to the task contract. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it, okay? So this, gets us the task contract address. Why is it complaining? There we go. Okay, cool. And now we need to actually get all of the tasks. So we need to go ahead and say, let all tasks, and I'm gonna say await task contract dot get my tasks. And then we can just say set tasks to all tasks, just like that. All right, else, Ethereum object does not exist. Okay, boom, there we go. So that right there should actually just get all of our tasks. We're getting all of our tasks, we're setting all of our tasks. So now all we actually need to do is in our to-do list. Well, our to-do list need ask, ac needs access to our tasks. And then we need to destructure it here, tasks. And I have these notes here that says, hey, just loop through all the tasks using the task component. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that now. So in our to-do list, let's go right there and I'm gonna say tasks.map and for each item, I want you to do the following. Okay, you're going to call the task component. All right, it's gonna be self-closing. And then the properties that we're gonna give it is for key is going to be just item.id task text is going to be item dot task text and on click we're going to give it an on click but for now let's leave it okay so on click delete task that's what we're going to do so i'm just going to leave that commented out cool now it's okay task could not find this component so we need to actually just import this component and then we should be good so we have created this task component right over here Okay, so we just need to import that. So import task from task, all right? And that should get access to it. And then we just render out the task component. And now let's take a look. So let's go back to our app. Let's hit refresh and let's see if it gets, if it's able to pull any of the tasks that we've created thus far. Ah, I discovered it. Okay, so we have to actually call get my task. We never called it. So how will it know? So we need to get all tasks like pretty much right when our app loads and then it's gonna get all the tasks and then it's gonna do the thing. Okay, there we go. That was the problem that was happening because right? you can even see it says, hey, get all tasks is declared but it's actually never ever used. So let's bring that bad boy back. Let's go here, let's refresh and let's see, fingers crossed, hopefully our tasks should show up. All right, so we're making some progress. So it's not writing out what those tasks are Okay, so something is happening with the task text. Let's just take a look. Task text okay, is the input of the user. Yep. 
also at the end, what we need to do of this uh, add task that we actually forgot to do at the end was we need to make sure that once you hit submit, you just reset it to empty like this. Okay, once you're done writing the task, just set it to empty. Okay, let's try eat a cookie. Let's try now and let's hit this. Okay, let's hit confirm and let's see if we have better luck this time. We do not have better luck this time. All right, let's to debug this problem. Let's just add a console log here and say, hey, just console log all tasks. And now when you go back actually, and if you refresh, watch what's gonna happen. Keep an eye on the console log and look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so you can see, that's what he said. <laughs> and uh, here you can see that I have all my tasks showing up, okay? Eat a cookie, eat a brownie, eat more, eat a cookie. So lots of cookie eating tasks were there. And then we have task text that you could see there. So our tasks are working correctly. They're just not showing up the way that we want them to. So we'll fix that now. So basically what this tells me is that it's just not being rendered out on the front end. So for example, if we follow the logic down, we're passing tasks to-do list. So let's go inside of to-do list. I command click it. We're destructuring tasks and then we're looping through tasks. So the culprit might be this task component. Let's command click into this. And if we look here, this is the component that should actually be showing the task because this here is the task component right there, like this specifically. So why is it not showing the task? I don't see task text anywhere. Even though we're passing it task test, it's not really doing anything with it. So we need to actually destructure and go task text. And then we need to actually show that task text right here, task text. Okay, so once we do that, let's go back. And look at that, here we go. Let's say drive a Ferrari, that's a task. Let's add it in. So it was a, so a good thing was it was a front end problem, it wasn't a back end problem, our back end was working perfectly and boom, drive a Ferrari. Now we need, the last thing we need is to make these delete buttons work. So let's go ahead and add the delete functionality. Okay, now let's add the delete task functionality. So for delete task functionality, it's not, this one is not going to be super complicated. This one is actually going to be fairly like straightforward. What we need to do is there's going to be some bits of repetitive code. Like for example, our try catch blocks So try, and then we're going to say catch error and then just say console log error. Okay. And then we actually need to get access to our task contract address. So we're just going to repeat this piece of code right here. All right, so this just runs, and the whole point of this is to get us access to our task contract address. Let's close out this if statement right here, and else will just be console log Ethereum does not exist or whatever. Okay, and now within this if statement is where all the magic is going to happen, and we're gonna go ahead and delete the task, so we can just say await oh, task contract dot delete task and when you delete a task we're going to give it a key okay that key is actually going to be passed in already okay that key is basically going to be like this so for example if you delete this task right over here this task already probably has the key of five because we gave it that key if i go to our to-do list we gave it that key right over here the item dot id and the id is incrementally loops from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, so on. And so let's go back into our index. So that key is already there. So we're going to give it that key. So it's like giving it hey, delete the eat the cookie task, AKA delete the task with ID of zero and set its deleted value to true. Okay. So now it's deleted value is set to true. So we're going to do this. Okay. And then what we want to do is we're just going to say, let all tasks Okay, and you could store this. So you could say const const delete task transaction, and you could console log and say successfully deleted, and then pass in that transaction. And let's put a little tada emoji in there. And then we're just gonna go ahead and await task contract and get all of our tasks again. Get my tasks. 
okay, and then set all of these tasks. So now we're going to set all of the new tasks because now it's going to send it to our back end. So we're just labeling a task as quote unquote. So we label a task as, hey, this is marked as deleted. Then we send it to our back end filters it. Once it filters it, okay, so once we're done, it filters it. We on our front end retrieve all of the tasks again from our back end or blockchain part. And then we just set those as the new tasks. And then we're done. Okay, so this is the delete task functionality. And uh, delete task functionality is now completed. Now, who needs access to delete task? Our to do list is going to need access to delete task. And the reason for that is our component task is going to need access to it. Okay. So it's like a little bit of prop drilling, but not too crazy. Okay, so let's go ahead and do delete task. Okay. And then let's go to our task components. And we're going to go ahead and say on click, right? On click, we are going to delete task and give it the item dot ID. That's it. Okay. And that should really delete it. So let's go ahead and uh, drive a Ferrari. Let's go ahead and delete this task. Okay. Let's go ahead and refresh, save a few times and delete. Okay. Nothing is happening right now. So what's the problem? Delete task. Okay, we're destructuring delete task. Let's go into index. We're passing delete task is being passed. So all of that is good. Actually, I don't think we need to add this here. We need to actually give this on click. All right, so we're gonna need to give this on click to delete task. So we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna pass this function delete task and we're gonna pass that down. So I don't think we need to actually add that here. Okay. So let's go to our delete our task component now. Okay. Let's go to our task component inside of our task component. Let's go ahead and delete task. Let's destructure delete task. Okay. And then here we're going to add an on click so on the garbage can is where the on click takes place. And we're going to go ahead and say delete task Okay, on click. That's what should happen. Now let's give it a try. I think this is to me is looking right now. Let's go ahead, click drive a Ferrari, try to delete it. So refresh. We get an error it should show us what the error is too. Oh yeah, we need to give it the specific item ID. So let's go ahead and do, actually what we could do is we could do it this the other way. Let's go back to our to-do list. And here we're actually gonna give it an on-click and the on-click here is going to be delete task and that specific item.id. And then let's go into task Let's go ahead and destructure on click and then we're going to give it the on click. OK, so that way we have access to item ID and we don't have to like destructure and pass down the item ID. OK, cool. So let's go and try it now. Remove drive a Ferrari and there we go. Now it's popping up. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and hit confirm on that. So that transaction, it says successfully deleted. OK. Now, if I go ahead and refresh my app, okay, let's see. Sometimes it takes a second, so let's give it some time. And there you go, okay? So yet yeah, while it's a successfully deleted and you get the transaction ID on the blockchain, it still needs to verify it. That takes some time. So once it's fully verified, it can, and now, then it deletes it. So now when I refresh and I go here, you see the Ferrari one is actually gone. So now if I create a new task, Let's go ahead and hit the plus sign. So when I hit confirm, this will add the task. Okay. Boom, we're, we got a new task. And now I can actually hit, let's go ahead and refresh. And uh, where's my new task go? Okay, now it's actually there. So even creating tasks takes a second. Okay, so that's why you have to wait a little bit. And now I can actually remove it. Okay, so successfully removed. I have the hash, the removal. But it's going to still verifying on the back end, right? The blockchain side. So see, now the new task has been deleted and it is not there. 
Guy, this is amazing. If you've gone this so far, huge props to you. All right, so I really hope you guys enjoyed building that to-do list app and you got to learn a ton of Solidity con concepts, how smart contracts work, how you actually interface your front end with the blockchain component. It's mind-blowing stuff. And we had authentication in there. So if I actually log out and I log in as a different user, you won't see these tasks there and you won't be able to delete these tasks and you won't be able to interface with them. So we have all of that and then some, and it was so quick and so nice. And we didn't even use a database, which is mind blowing and cool. I hope you enjoyed it. Huge credit and shout out to Code with Kavit. You should check out also his video. Huge shout out to him. So for a lot of the ideas in this video and some of the code for the code for the smart contract and a lot of the inspiration. Okay, so that was really awesome. And so thank you, Code with Kavit. That, that was a huge shout out to you. And again, guys, as always, I love your beautiful face. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.